It's the World Series of Poker, and you know what that means. We're flying out to Vegas. This is my third year making the trip. We ran into Tom Dwan too and many other high stake players and a few actors. You know, it's always pretty cool to meet guys who you grew up watching, you know. I've seen hundreds of hours of Tom Dwan film. It was pretty cool to run into him. Keep it a buck though, these weren't really the most interesting pots or the well played pots. I made a lot of mistakes out there in Vegas, but, you know, that's going to happen when you're on vacation, trying to have a good time, and poker is just a bonus, like an afterthought. Still want to make a vlog out of it, though, because we only go to Vegas, like, once a year. Anyways, let's get into hand number one at Bellagio. Lost only, like, two decent-sized pots already. Had to add on. We're in for 700, but only playing about 300 effective, about 40 minutes into the session. When we look down at pocket kings, there's an open for 10, one caller, and I three bet to 45. I'm hyped that, you know, I'm like, this is just what I needed to come back up. The initial razor then four bets to 125, and it folds around to me. I mean, I'm not even happy about this. This is a pretty old guy at the table, OMC. You know, it's a very small milking kind of four bet too, just asking for a call. This is really only done by aces, but I mean... I'm not going to fold pocket kings all in preflop on a $300 stack. You know, I'm, I'm getting that in all day long, 100 big blinds. I jam, he calls, somebody says, please, please, not, not aces versus kings again. Not again. This happened shortly before I, I arrived. I found out and he did have aces. Sure enough, we missed the board. I just get up and leave. I don't even rebuy at that point. Clearly... I'm not having good luck at that table. It's better just walk away. I have a long, almost two-mile walk back to my hotel. And the whole way, I'm just thinking like, damn, this is going to be a long week. You know, I, I'm a gamble. I'm a gamble for real. But if I fuck around and fly home down 10K, I'm going to be miserable. I need to start winning after this. This is not a good start. Just to retouch on the walk, I think that will be a core memory for me walking home in Vegas. Semi-broke. Too cheap to call an Uber. I'd rather gamble with that little $13 that the ride costs. With all those worried thoughts running through my mind. And, you know, let's just go to day two at Aria. Now, I didn't plan on playing any more poker the first day. We just gambled in the pits the rest of the night. And now at Aria, I open for 12 in late position with Queen Jack of Spades. We get three callers and hit to the flop in position of four Queen Ace. It checks to me. We got middle pair and last to act. So I see better 15 and only get one caller. The turn is an eight and he donks into me for 15. I don't think this donk bet is really a flush draw. I think it means more of, you know, an ace with a bad kicker. Just trying to name his price at the river. I decided to just call and the river is a jack of clubs. Giving us two pair but it completes the flush. He slows down and checks. I check back just to be safe. I show two pair and we're good. He shakes his head a little disappointed, meaning we might have sucked down on him with the ace there. And we take it down. We pick up ace king in the big blind. There's an open for 15 in early position. It folds around to me. A little weird, he opened for such a big raise. This guy usually just limps in, but I still think a three bet here is in order. So I bump it up to 45. Heads up to the flop, and I see bet for 35. This guy almost beats me into the pot. As soon as I start cutting out 35, he grabbed chips, getting ready, and he almost even puts them in the pot before I even cross the line. I take note of that. The turn changes nothing, and I slow down and check it over to him. Don't think a bluff is working here. He bets 75. I fold. He obviously liked his hand, you know, he seemed a little too excited over there. I let it go. About 10 minutes later, we get pocket queens. I open for 10 under the gun. We get quite a few callers and the big blind three bets to 45. I think about four betting here, but decide not to since we're in position. And given the stack sizing, it just wouldn't really make sense. So I just call. Heads up to the flop of... Six King Jack all hearts. He see bets for 25. I know we got the Queen of Hearts, so we got a second pair with the flush draw. 
I don't think he has a flush. I put him on more of like an ace king type of hand. I just call. Looking for some help on the turn, and it's the ace of spades. Now he bets 50. We pick up some straight outs, but, you know, if I put him on ace king and the ace of spades just fell, it's more likely he's holding the ace of hearts. So we technically re really don't even want to see a flush come out here. We smack the river for the straight. When the ten of diamond comes out, though, it all worked out. He checks in. I'm just thinking, what size should I bet here to get him to call? I forgot exactly, but he only had like two, three hundred behind. Now, if I bet too big, though, it's committing his stack, and he'll probably fold. So I figure a hundred is the perfect size, relatively small compared to the size of the pot. And, you know, it's not committing too much of a stack. He tanks for a while. And I mean a while, man. It, it was for sure a very long tank. It was definitely over a minute. And then he calls and I flip over the bad news for him and we take it down. He says I was behind the whole way from the flop and I caught on the river. So, it, I mean, he probably did have ace king, ace jack, pocket jacks. He, had, he definitely had at least had, you know, two pair or something like that. But he didn't really show, so I don't know for sure, but that's what he said. That was the last interesting hand of that day, but we play almost every day out there. You know, we still got more sessions to go over, more hands. Let's move on to the next day. I try to play at a different casino every day because, you know, I'm not in Vegas that often. We're never going to hit every single casino, but today we're at Resorts World in for 300, and about 20 minutes into the session, we get dealt pocket eights. There's a decent amount of limps over to me in the big blind, and I make it 21. That's pretty much 3x the big blind plus all the limpers. A short stack now jams all in for 109. He was under the gun, and everyone else folds. I think for a little bit, you know, you know, actually, he wasn't under the gun. He was more like middle position. He was like under the gun plus two. But anyways, I think for a little bit, and this guy doesn't seem like the type to... Limp three bat or limp jam aces or kings or queens. I'm pretty confident our eights are ahead of here. And it's a small jam anyways. So I call. The run out goes king, queen, seven, nine, king. You know, it's not good seeing the kings and queens out there. He announces queens. We lose. He shows queen, ten, suited. So it was a good call pre-flop at least. We were ahead. And we really need to start winning these all-ins. I think that's like the third or fourth all-in I lost since being in Vegas. Haven't won one yet. Really need to start winning these all-ins. Next, we got pocket kings. And I open for 12 over a few limbs. We go to the flop four ways of 9, 10, 6 rainbow. There's two checks to me. And I decided to play a little tricky and check. The board looks safe, but I mean... There's really no reason to do this. I don't need to be balancing my play against strangers in Vegas that I will never play or never see again. But anyways, it checks through and turns to seven of clubs. It checks to me again, and I bet out 25. It folds around to the player on my right, and he makes it 100. You know, at 1-3, check re-raises or check three bets. They're never... A good sign you know someone usually probably has a better hand than you and this guy's been playing pretty tight since I got here but there's a four liner to straight on the board too which I really should fold my pocket kings here I'm too attached though and I end up calling heads up and the river doesn't change anything he bets 100 again I begin to start over analyzing like does he really have an eight I'm starting to think you know the blockers on the board like Oh, he's less likely to have 8-9 or 8-10, cause, et cetera, because it's on the board. I call, and what does he show? 8-4 offsuit. I really need to start believing these 1-3 players. Every time I hear a call, they always have it. They don't bluff. I make this mistake often, and you know, I, I say it's a pretty big leak in my game at 1-3 at least. Plus, I'm never limp calling preflop with 8-4 offsuit. I don't expect him to be... Limp calling preflop with 8-4 offsuit either, especially out of position. But I, I guess he's really playing any two cards. He's limping any two cards. I definitely need to start realizing that these 1-3 players are unpredictable. They're just here to have fun, and that's my mistake. 
I played for like another 45 minutes, but end up leaving. It was a short last minute type of session since we were heading to Fremont Street to gamble in the pits. And I didn't really want to keep them waiting too long for me too long. We play at MGM Grand for about 30 minutes on the last day. I leave right away though because the table wasn't good. It was a 1-2 uncapped. I was expecting it to play deeper, but everyone was playing like 130 effective and very tight. I did hear though and, and see a few clips that the 1-2 does get pretty deep there and crazy there. You know, maybe I should have went at late night. You know, I heard a lot of people be splashing around just having a good time throwing money around left and right. I probably really was just there at the last, at the wrong time. So over five days, we lost 716, which is not too bad, really, when you think about it, because the first day we lost 700 all in pre, you know, Kings versus Aces, nothing we could really do about that there. That's just bad variance. It's going to happen sometimes. So if you exclude that, we really broke even for the rest of the days, but I still wasn't happy with my play, you know. We made a lot of mistakes, could have got away with a, a few easy folds there. But we did win about twice that in the pits. So at, for the trip as a whole, we actually made money. And, you know, I really don't talk about my pits play that much here on this vlog. But, you know, we played a lot of Baccarat, Blackjack, Crabs. We did it all while we was out there. And something that really stuck with me is what Ben Deej said, and I, I just read, watched the Alexo vlog too. He mentioned it too, but Ben Deej said it first. If you watch his vlogs, he said, this is the worst time of the year to fly out to Vegas, and I agree with him. He said, think about it. You know, anybody who's a winning player, a, poke, a winning poker player, they're flying out to Vegas to play in these tournaments, and, you know, once they bust the tournaments, what are they doing? They're playing cash. So the cash scene is really oversaturated with really good players. And so you're basically playing at like the worst tables possible. And then back home, a lot of the winning players back home in your local casinos, they leave and fly out to Vegas. So you're missing pretty much the best time to play in your home games, your home casinos, because all the good players left. And, you know, just let me know in the comments if you agree with that statement or not. But I'm definitely going to keep that in mind for next year. I might move my Vegas trip away from the World Series of Poker time. Let me know in the comments. I'll see you on the next one. Oh, real quick, too. You know, I actually picked up a lot of chips from my poker collection while I was out there. I don't know if y'all can see this, but, you know, some might be blocking it. But, you know, we got a lot of win, Aria, MGM Grand. It's coming along, man. We're we going we gonna to fill it up soon. That's it. I'll see you on the next one.